Good morning. And guess what? We ain't talking the Lakers today. Time to run it back. Run it up to run it back. Yeah. Run it up to run it back. Run it back. Run it up. Good morning. It's November 1st, the day after Halloween. Of course, Stadium Insider Sham Sharani is here. Chandler Parsons, Eddie G in the house. Uh, did everybody have a good Halloween? Who went trick-or-treating, Eddie? I think you did, right? I did. Uh, took my daughter, oh. Khaleesi, trick-or-treating. She was an angel. Uh, she's so, like, anti-everything. She she brought the smallest bucket she could and said, all right, time to go home. She what? did, like, four houses. It was fun. She yeah, doesn't she's like the it? complete opposite of me. Yeah, I don't, she said, my legs are tired. I have enough candy. I said, what? There's enough candy? All right. Well, I mean, so. I'm, first of all, how old is she? Because this is like, she might be an anomaly. She's nine, so she definitely is an anomaly. <laughs> no such thing as too much candy or enough candy. I'm a little bit shocked. I saw Ever. Chandler was in the, in the spirit as well. I think Shams and I are the two losers on the panel. <laughs> next year, next year. All right, we're going to get things kicked off, Eddie, with your uh, your part of the world, the Nets and the Pacers. The Nets, woohoo, figured something out, right? Broke the five-game losing streak. What do we think? Did they Did they figure out any kind of a secret, Eddie? Um. No, they <laughs> they, they yeah. looked a little better. I mean, they absolutely needed this win. They're they're not an awful team. Like they shouldn't be one in five. Shouldn't have been. Um, but there was still a lot to be concerned about. They gave up a lot of open shots. They were up twenty four points in that game, uh, just to turn around and then be down in the third quarter. Uh, they they had the same defensive lapses. I think what improved in part with Ben Simmons not being there is they had more space in the offense, more fluidity on offense, uh, not even because what he doesn't do. It's just that the defense had to play a little more honest. They, they started Joe Harris in his place. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's still a lot of issues there. They're still a little too lackadaisical, even with them needing this game that bad, uh, but Hey, they won. Sometimes you have to win ugly and that's what they did. <laughs> I mean, it still counts, right, Shams? It still counts. Did you see any big differences? I, I mean, I think clearly the defense was a lot better. They held uh, Indiana to 28% three-point shooting. They weren't sniping from everyone on the court like Indiana did on Saturday night where the defense was just pathetic. Um, but I think there are still concerns just moving forward. The team is so isolation-heavy down the stretch of games. You see what, what the way KD and Kyrie can create and play make and, and create shots for themselves – um, and for others, but there's not really much creation around them. And that's why you, you want to have Ben Simmons in those positions to whether he's playing that drop position in pick and rolls, whether he's getting guys involved on the fast break, that's the value of a guy like Ben Simmons at his peak. So they're, they're still missing that factor. We'll see when they get it back. But, uh, you know, Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant had six of the, of the team's 13 threes. They were the focal point of the offense. Uh, but on nights where one or two or both struggle, we don't, we see that the Nets have a hard time winning games. So that that is a concern. And it's so hard for the Nets to have blowout wins, it seems. Even last night when they were up 20 or 25 or whatever it was, Indiana comes roaring back and, and they get into games and it becomes an ugly finish. Yeah, they hit it on the head, I think, as well. I think you know, they, had, they had a double-digit lead pretty much all game long uh, and allowed the Pacers to kind of stick around and come back and make that push there. But uh, I'm still not convinced. Like, like the guy said, that it's going to take two – Big game from Kyrie and KD. I kind of like their offense more without Ben Simmons, without the defense, uh, the defense clogging up the paint, allowing them to spread to the shooters more. Um, so it's interesting. It's interesting to see. It's kind of like when the Lakers played the other day without Russ. How's it going to work? This is like the Nets now playing without Ben Simmons, and they got a little taste of it. But I I'm with the guys. I'm still not convinced. There's still a lot of holes in this team, and uh, a win is a win in this league. But it, it, it didn't really convince me. All right, so no, no one's super convinced, Eddie. I know I, it can't be KD and Kyrie all the time because you're right. Somebody's going to struggle, if not both, on certain nights. So the third dependable scorer should be who? Uh, I guess Nick Claxon. That's the way it's set up right now. Uh, last night he had a solid game, 19 points, uh, nine rebounds. They're pretty much force-feeding him his buckets. And because of KD and Kyrie, and last night without Ben on the court, there's a ton of openings there for him. So it, it can be him. He's not necessarily that kind of player, but nine of 11, a lot of easy looks. Um, I, I think they would like it to be Ben, but he's just so adverse to shooting, not even scoring, just shooting at all, that it's probably not going to be him anytime soon. I think that's yeah, fair. I think, 
Yeah, I think it's got to be like a collective effort of those other shooters. It's got to be a Patty Mills one night. It's got to be a Curry one night. It's got to be a Joe Harris. But having Nick Claxton as your your third score on a championship team, I, that's tough, man. And, and I don't. It's not going to be Ben Simmons. So I think it's just going to have to be that third spot's going to have to be someone different every night, and someone's going to have to show up to help those other two. I like it. A rotating third spot. Uh, look, I hate to do this because I'm always really against talking about the coaches and if they should lose their jobs or not. But I feel like with Steve Nash, it becomes a topic of conversation at least once a season since he's been there. Are the problems with this team all personnel or at what point, or do we ever look to Steve Nash to be in the hot seat Chandler? I mean, you can't say he's doing a good job, but I I think he's a brilliant mind. I think he was a hell of a player. Sometimes the best players don't make the best coaches and and they, they see the game differently and, and, they can't articulate that in a way that, uh, you know, they would do as, as them playing. So I, I, I don't know, man. I don't, I don't love the schemes. I, I like their roster. I like their team. I like their talent. They're just not showing it to us on the court. Um, and, and listen, to, to be there, what, four years now and not make it past the second round with that amount of talent and with, with James Harden on their team last year, it's like we can think of all these excuses, but they have the pieces implemented. They're just – not being a good product. So uh, at some point, yeah, uh, uh, he's, he's, he's gonna, his seat's going to get hot. Yeah. I think the way this franchise is set up, they had the second highest tax bill last year. They're trying to compete. They're trying to contend. If they're the first shoe that's going to fall is for sure going to be the head coach. If there is one, Um, they had all the conversation about it this summer. We don't know where they stand at the moment, but yeah, if things get worse, you, you'd have to imagine that's going to happen. It's not like they're going to send guys home. They can't cut players. This isn't the NFL. The roster is what the roster is. Even their tradable assets like Patty Mills can't be traded till December. So, yeah, if you're going to do anything dramatic, it's going to be your head coach. I don't know that he's on the hot seat just now, but if it gets worse, he's going to have to be. Let's not forget, too, their best player wanted him fired a couple months ago. Like, so I don't think that's gone away with the scorching <laughs> hot start. It's not like they come out on fire. So yeah, he, someone's going to be the scapegoat. And like you said, it's not going to be a player. It's not going to be KD. It's not, they're not just going to cut Kyrie, even with all the circus around him. I mean. <laughs> Probably going to fall on Nash. There are a lot. Uh, just real quickly on the Kyrie thing. Every morning there are more and more articles uh, calling for either him to be let go or some sort of punishment. It's, it's, it's got to be hot down there. And also, if I'm Steve Nash, why do I want to coach this team? Like, I got a lot of other great things I could be doing. I've always wondered that about Steve Nash. What is the draw for him to have to be in this position? Does anybody know or can anybody even speculate? It's I mean, that's what I wonder. <laughs> it's living in New York. Well, I, I mean, think. he can live in New York without a gig. Like, he's got, he's got the money. Do whatever yeah. you want. I don't get it. It is confusing because the guy has money. The guy has it all, but I, he just loves the game. He loves coaching. He says it all the time. It's just. <sighs> he was chilling. In my, he was literally chilling in Manhattan Beach. No one thought he would take the Nets job. He took it when they offered it, you know, after like three weeks of decision making from what I was hearing at the, at the time. And like he had a great life in Manhattan Beach. He was literally chilling. So <laughs> maybe at some point, you know. Back yeah, to I'm that out. life. You never know. I'm Steve Nash. I'm out. Uh, moving on. Sixers, don't look now. Do not look now. But they won their third straight. No Embiid. What did we see that maybe we think they've turned things around, Chandler? Anything? I mean, Tyrese Maxey is a hooper. This guy is playing, uh, you know, all-star level. Um, and what he's doing, he's really showing that James Harden can be more of a facilitator. And he can be in that role where he can step up when Embiid is out. And they're playing really well with Embiid out. But... This kid is aggressive. He's fast. Someone last night during the game called him sudden, which I thought was really good. Like he's very, he's very like sudden. Like it's, it's impressive. He's got that explosive speed. He's so quick. He can make shots. Um, and then James is obviously going to do his thing and contribute. But uh, last night, the X Factor was, uh, was Melton. The guy had 16 points off the bench with 7 of 10 shooting. I think he should play a lot more for them. And, and I think, listen, this team is not going to struggle all year long. They're going to find their strides. They're deep. They have shooting. Um, they have toughness. I, I think they're going to figure it out. And I think Joel being out right now is a, kind of a blessing in disguise with letting, you know, Tyrese and James get in their feel. Yeah, Shabs, because it, it's two games now without Joel. And I know Doc's made a concerted effort to make sure that this team knows they can win without him. Uh, what is the strategy when Joel Embiid is not around? 
So I think what we're seeing here is that there's there's two different styles. When James is when James is running the show and his James show, they're playing very up tempo and fast. When Joel's there, of course, you have to slow it down a little bit because they, you have to get the, the 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 big man involved in the low post. So they've won two of three of these these games these games in a row without Joel Embiid. He he was out the other night and then he was sick last night. So I think for for the team. Uh, it's it's when James is running the show, they play up tempo, they play fast. And I think he even spoke about it last night is we need to figure out a way when Joel's in the lineup because they know they need him. Like you're not, you, you're not winning a championship without Joel Embiid having a very serious role and probably being the number one guy on this team. But I'm curious, Chandler played with James Harden. He was around for the Daryl Morey era in Houston. So where's this style? I mean, is there going to be a clash of style? Like how are they going to try to move forward here when the team runs really two different setups? Yeah. With and Joel it was without? when I had him in Houston, it was kind of the same thing with Dwight Howard as that up and coming best big man league and James as the guard. And they definitely butt heads. And I don't think the personalities are exactly identical with Joel and Dwight, but James is James is difficult, but he's also incredible to play with. I, I, I loved him as a teammate. I thought, you know, I had my best year with him. I, I got my big deal because of James Harden. So I have nothing but bad <laughs> things to say about him because I basically just stood there. I stood there at the elbow. He lulled his guy to sleep. He kicked it to me and I either shot it or drove to the basket. But uh, he creates so much. I love him as a creator. But in the back of his mind, James Harden is a scorer. He's one of the best scorers the game's ever seen. He's always going to be able to go get you a bucket. But it's nice. No, and earlier on in the season when they were losing, he was trying to do a lot of scoring. I think now they're having a little. They're going to have some more success with him facilitating Tyree, Tyrese getting out on the break, getting buckets, and having that combination and mixture of throwing the ball inside and and, and just kind of having a balanced attack. But yeah, it's 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 interesting. I think later in his career, now I think he's more understanding and just wants championship and wants to win. But yeah, there was definitely some some head knocking when when I was in Houston with him and Dwight. Yeah, I think the Sixers, they had these issues a little bit when they had been as well. It's a team that is, in a lot of ways, set up to run. The, the idea is, yo, you, sound, you surround Joel with a bunch of shooters and that can space the floor. But you can also run with those guys. You could, you know, you got a big 6'10 shooter like uh, Karooks and uh, all these guys that come off their bench, Milton, like we mentioned. And then Maxi, who, as you said, he's sudden. He wants to play fast. And James, James has been kind of plotting before, but this year, yes, he's kicking the ball. They're getting more active. Um, you know, there is a natural clash and maybe it's on Joel to get in better shape. Maybe it's on Joel to adjust. People have worried about his conditioning for pretty much his whole career. Uh, they're going to need him in the paint in, in the playoffs either way, but yeah, it would be nice for him to be able to fit in on that style of ball as well. And we'll see how they implement that. Yeah, and we know how important the MVP award is to Joel Embiid, but if this is the style, I'm thinking he's going to be frustrated and angry at some point. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe we'll be pleasantly surprised. I don't know. In the interest of being fair and balanced, of course, they did play a team last night. It was the Washington Wizards. Porzingis with 32, but that, we're not going to talk about that. This is an excuse to show a video, and I'm excited about it. Boom! What do we oh think about that, God. guys? <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, missed the fast break he's had a big year, but damn. Shout out, you, you put the sauce on the dunk. He's, He's got well, to make it. That was tough. Oh, yeah, Chandler, man. you ever, you ever, you ever did this, Chandler? Yeah, I'm guilty of that as well. But you know what? <laughs> it would have been late in the game. We would have been up 20. It would have been this in like what was this, third quarter. That's a third I don't quarter. Like that. Yeah. Wide open, <laughs> wide open. Oh, I love videos like that. It's, yeah, whatever. Oh, uh, we've got one team left just sole team standing unbeaten at six and oh it's the bucks of course they still don't have middleton um but that does not seem to be a problem and i want to know why how are they able to continue this hot streak going chandler without chris middleton uh because they have the best player in the world and the guy is yeah. on a mission Boom. he he is balling man he's he's doing things at a crazy clip he's playing defense he's getting on the break he's scoring points he, he's He's really, really, really doing it all, and uh, I'm not surprised. It's, it's it's between him and Brooke Lopez, you know, playing great. I think he's averaging three blocks a game. Drew Holiday's been that floor general. Um, they're just a really sound team. They got guys like Bobby Portis that are stepping up, playing big roles for them. Um, 
they're just a seasoned team that ex experienced, and the fact that they're doing this without their second best player is, is you know, got to be an unbelievable feeling for them because they're they're only going to get better from here. Yeah, Shams, do we have any updates by the way on Middleton? So I did check on it. I'm told the the plan still remains that he, that he's going to be back in the lineup at some point mid to late this month. So we're already in November, uh, which is crazy uh, to think about. But it's it's November one now. The goal is still to get Chris Milton back in the lineup uh, before the month is out. But yeah, I mean, what they're doing right now, how deep they are as a team, and this is not a team that's gone through many changes. They have literally brought back basically the entire team that they had last season, uh, you know, resigned different players, gave Pat Connaughton the extension, uh, resigned Bobby Portis. So this is, this team is seasoned. They're, they're veteran laden and they're a team that's ready and prime to make another run potentially. Yeah. They, they don't have anything to be stressed out about yet, but, I, but will they ever Eddie, is there a team in the East that you can see that could give them an actual run for their money? Well, the team that beat them last year, the Celtics, you, you would love to see that series, uh, healthy matchup between them. Obviously the Celtics need to get Robert Williams back to really have the defense that they want to have against Giannis. Uh, I, I think about the Cavs as well. I'd like to see Giannis against that big front line, Evan Mobley, Jared Allen in the playoff series, just to see how they mix that up for him and complicate things. But I mean, it's tough. Um, they're hot streak. Now they're there. We were wondering last week, yo, who is going to be their second option. And then drew holiday scores 29 points a game for the last two games and 11 <laughs> assists as well. Brooke Lopez is leading the league in blocks. And I think he's a key of what they've done to be not even resurgent. We knew they were going to be a great team, but to be a great team this year, he's healthy again. He's spacing the floor. Giannis absolutely needs Brooke Lopez just as much as he needs any uh, Chris Middleton. He spaces the floor for him on offense. He doesn't clog up the lane as the center. And then on defense allows Giannis to free roam, knowing he has that big fella behind him protecting the rim. He's been great this season. Uh, Mike Boonehoser just called him the key to the season. And it, I think it's true. He's He's been incredible for them. Yay. Good job, Brooke Lopez. Chandler, you look so serious. <laughs> what, what's, oh, what's going on? <laughs> yeah. I'm, just, like, I'm, I'm trying, trying to think of... <laughs> I'm trying to think of a team, and honestly, it's 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 Boston. But I watched Toronto, and with their defensive schemes and the way they got these just big, strong wings like OG and Scotty. No one's talking about Siakam this year right now. He is straight balling. But defensively, they have those two long bigs that switch on pick and rolls with OG and and uh, Scotty and and Siakam. Those guys are going to give Giannis, I think, the the most trouble being able to put that physicality. So listen, are they going to beat him in a series? No, but I was just racking my brain thinking what <laughs> team has a chance. And he called me out. But yeah. I All like right. Toronto. I like Toronto and, and give flowers to, to Siakam because he, he is not being talked about and he is playing just as good as anybody. That was your thinking face. Note to self. I will, yeah. uh, I will not call you out again. <laughs> um, by the way, we, we have to try to guess who's going to hand them their first loss. These are their next five games, Detroit at Minnesota, OKC at Atlanta, and then at OKC, what are we? Th who, who wants to take a guess here? Mm. Jesus, they're not know. on this. They're not on this graphic. <laughs> Whatever team it is, they're not on this graphic. Sorry, I can see <laughs> at Atlanta. Uh, I mean, I, I can see Hawks. at Atlanta. I can yeah. see, see that. Yeah. Do we all agree? Yeah, I can oh, no, see we that. all agree. Okay, fine. I honestly, I don't, I don't, I don't think they're going to lose any of those five games. But I think Atlanta would be the obvious one there. There's one back to back, but the second, in, the second night is OKC. Yeah, I think they win them all, honestly. Maybe you know what? I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb. I think it's going to be Detroit. It's going to be a bit of a, like, oh, wow. It's going to be the first one on that list. It's going to be Detroit. Let's see what happens. I don't win any prizes, but we'll see. Uh, the Jazz. Okay. <laughs> Every day I sort of giggle when we bring up the Utah Jazz, but they're they're sitting at 6-2. and two. They beat Memphis um, convincingly, by the way. Uh, I still think this is part of a long-term strategy to tank and then say we tried, but should they? tank i mean now there are people saying maybe they should actually try to win something here does any i mean shams what do you think like are there moves to be made will there be moves made what what do you predict they have teams calling them every day on jordan clarkson on on malik malik beasley's they have they have a list of suitors on both of those guys i'm told but i, I think you just have to ride this out you have to see what this team looks like in 20 to 25 games i know they're off to this crazy start that no one predicted you have pictures of danny ainge looking weird you know like super super <laughs> upset 
at Will Hardy. Um, by the way, I mean, Danny Ainge loves Will Hardy, so he must have just got caught in the moment. Uh, that's Will, That's his guy. I'm sure he's actually re- reveling in the fact that they got off to this great start. Because like you said, Michelle, I think things can trickle off. I want to see this team 20 games in, 25 games in, see their record. They can always start flipping guys closer to January if they want to. Yeah, I think yeah, they have great. time to make that. De- I think they have time to make that decision. But I mean, I was wondering this yesterday. They look great. They're they're an active team on defense. I'm looking up their stats, trying to figure out like, yo, how are they doing this? None of their stats jump out. They're fourth in the league in assists. They're clearly a team that's spreading the ball out. That that checks out. But they're just a solid team that's playing hard. And so I started wondering, yo, you only have a 14 percent chance to win the number one pick if you're even if you're the last four teams. That's is that worth it? I know this is a great superstar to be that we're looking at, uh, but yo, building something now with the players you have now and and making the playoffs now, that's really beneficial to a franchise as well. Will Hardy, the youngest head coach in the league, he's got these guys ready every night. Colin Sexton hasn't even really been unleashed yet, so I just like yo, maybe maybe they should play this out. They have players they can trade to even beef up themselves. And you have to remember, they have all of those uh, Timberwolves draft picks. It's not like they lack in draft capital going forward. So, yeah, maybe build for now. I, I, I think it's worth taking a look at as we get further into the season. Yeah, huh. yeah, I, I like them. I like them. Listen, they're, it's early. They're, they're six and two, I think, right? Um, it's too early to tell. I think if this continues, which it's hard to imagine they can, they don't come back to reality at some point here, but <laughs> it's fun. I think it's fun. These guys are playing hard. They have a nice combination of vets and young guys. Pretty much everyone on the roster can shoot. Uh, and Lori Markin is playing very, very well. I think when you get a guy like him who had a lot of hype coming out of the draft, he was a top 10 pick for whatever reason, just didn't reach his potential in his, in his other teams, but uh, he's playing extremely well. And I think him playing on the national team, Jordan Clarkson playing on his national team, I think they just continue to stay in shape and they they got game reps throughout the summer. And now it's paying off early on in the season. But yeah, if this continues and they're, you know, 20, 30 games in, they're, they're still, you know, well above 500 and in the hunt, you can't just shut it down. So it, it's interesting, but I'm still, I still think it's eventually going to start, you know, tricking yeah, You're off. holding on to that. By the way, this is quite the turn from, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago when for sure we thought, no, this team's awful. This is, I'm enjoying all of it. We don't know anything is what I'm trying to say. No talking head on television really <laughs> knows what they're talking about. That is what I want the world to know. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. I think it every time. Uh, Shams with some scoop. Plus, is it time to hit the panic button on a future Hall of Famer? All that next on Run It Back. Run It Back. Run It Back. Run It Back. All right, Shams. Zach Levine, questionable, expected to play tonight versus the Nets. All right. He would then sit Wednesday's game against the Hornets and then manage the knee during early part. Okay, okay. Shams, so he's playing against the Nets? Is that the deal? He is playing against the Nets. It's a national TV game on TNT, so he will be out there. I don't know how that affects the Lions, but he will be a go tonight. And I think for for the Bulls and Levine, this early part of the year with that knee, he, he has surgery on it. Over the offseason, they want to make sure they manage it on back-to-backs. Um, and so he will be in the lineup tonight. They play against the Hornets at home tomorrow. So the plan had been to rest him on the road and then play at home. But this being a national TV game against the Nets, uh, an Eastern Conference competitor, uh, he will give it a go. Speaking of the Nets, do you have uh, the latest on Ben Simmons? So from what I'm told, Ben Simmons yesterday uh, it was dealing with soreness and swelling in his knee, and he missed the game yesterday. The hope and the plan had been that he would play tonight. Um, you know, we'll see. Anytime a player has swelling or reports swelling in the knee, you you don't you just don't know if they can actually play when they when they intend and want to. Uh, but the hope was that this was not a long term injury. All right, and then when the the Sixers getting a little punishment yesterday they're being docked a couple draft picks for tampering shams what can you share about that they lost two second round picks over the next two years in 2023 and 2024 because the league investigated them and had findings that they made early free agency contact with pj tucker and daniel house jr um so those two were they they were given consequence for the big thing though michelle that the league found there was no wrongdoing in was James Harden taking that $15 million pay cut. That was actually what 
people around the league were really looking into is when a guy gives up a $48 million player option to sign for, you know, whatever it was, 33, 34 million, that's when antennas went up. Um, but the league found there was huh. no wrongdoing in that pay cut. Guys, I, I look, I like PJ Tucker and Daniel House Jr. as much as the next guy, but is that, did we need to tamper to get these deals? I mean, I don't understand why this just happened, Chandler. This seems a little bit odd. Um, I think in this scenario, I don't think it's that big of a deal because their second round picks are most likely going to be later in the draft anyways. And, you know, those guys are solid assets for them. But yeah, you, you don't want to lose picks. You don't want to lose potential prospects. But it, it's interesting because every free agency, he, there's communication, right? Your, your agent is talking ahead of time. He's telling you your offers that are coming in. So there's nonstop with every player, whether it's a max player, a minimum player, you know, a, a, it doesn't matter. They're, they're, they're talking. And so it's interesting to me on, on which ones they decide to investigate and how you actually get caught. And because they're, they're, they're all doing it and, and they all know, I knew my deals before free and start. When you see these guys sign at midnight and they announce, what do you think they negotiated the, you know, 20 seconds yes. before like it's, yes. <laughs> So That's it's what been I going. Think. <laughs> it's been going on. It's been going on for years. I just don't understand, you know, the difference in my agent talking to the teams or my manager, or whoever's talking to them. But the deals are getting done way far in advance than that, you know, mid midnight or whatever the deadline is. I know it's all an illusion, Chandler. We have to we have to sell the illusion that it happens at eleven fifty nine fifty nine. Shams, muchas gracias, sir. <laughs> I, I do have to say, I mean, the, these, oh. I mean, this is rampant around the league. I mean, I, Chandler knows. I mean, I think we all know, like, this is something that we can all, I think it's whenever it's so blatant, I guess. I mean, I don't, I don't think there's a rhyme or a reason, you know, there's some in, instances that get investigated that, that there are others that don't. I mean, Chandler, I'm sure saw it was when he was a player. So um, we'll see, we'll see what happens, but appreciate you guys. We will see. See you tomorrow, Shams. Appreciate you. Uh, time for a little panic button. I, this is my favorite because we just always overreact. And we're going to start with Eddie. Carl Anthony Towns, are we hitting a panic button on him at this point in the season? My sleeper MVP pick? Don't do it to me, Eddie. Don't. Come on, Eddie. <laughs> no no panic button for Cat. Uh, I joke Not about yet. I joke about him more than any other player in the league, maybe. But he's talented. He's, he's great at what he does. He's... I don't know if he's the best big man shooter ever, like he says, but he's a great big hmm. man as a shooter as well. I think, uh, you know, he, there's an adjustment period for him, both with having Rudy Gobert there, as well as Anthony Edwards stepping up even more in his role. He's added two more shots to his arsenal this year. Uh, he's taking a bigger part in the offense. He's leading the team in scoring. Uh, Cat will figure it out. This is a team, I, I think Chandler is right in that, like, yo, there is some success in their future for sure. MVP might be a stretch, but they'll they'll be fine as they go on. They they needed Rudy and they needed an advancement from Ant badly. And so Cat will just adjust and I think he will. Okay, see Chandler, you're still alive. Don't worry. Uh how about Ben Simmons? I mean, I feel like that's just gonna be the question all year long. Panic button yet? Is that me or Eddie? Oh, that's you, Chandler. My bad. Um I mean, yeah, I, listen, it's it's early and the guy hasn't played in two years, but you, you can just see he's not the same player. He plays timid. He, he's not shooting the ball. He's not playing aggressive. Even when he tries to play aggressive, he's doing some 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 wild things out there. I wish you would just focus on the defensive end, play hard, do all the little things. And, and he's shown flashes of that. But with his salary and the way he's playing, I just can't see a light going off and him just, you know, all of a sudden balling again. So, yeah, I'm panicked with with that. He's young still, so he still has somewhat of a, of a bright side here. But I'm, right now, I'm panicking. All right, Chandler's panicking on Ben Simmons. This next one, Eddie, I feel like should have an asterisk by it because we, I think he gets a little more time. But Jamal Murray, do, you, do we think it's panic time for him? No, not yet. I mean, ACL is a tough injury to come back from. He has had ample time. He is healthy uh, structurally, but he's getting back into the flow of playing NBA games. Uh, he scored 25 the other night against the Lakers, looked a little bit more like himself. This is also a different team he's coming back to. Michael Porter's taking a bigger role. Uh, they have Bruce Brown there helping a little bit with the ball handling. Jokic is obviously a two-time MVP, and he's going to get his. Uh, so Jamal, you know, he's just getting his feet wet. I think as we get into December and, and beyond, we'll see the old Jamal and it, he'll be, he'll be fine. Okay. No panic there. Chandler for you. 
With both rebounds and blocks below career averages, Joel Embiid. Panic or no? It's a good one. It's it's a really good one. I'm still I'm not panicking. The the guy's still averaging, you know, 27, 10, and 3. I don't think he's in the best shape with his injury history. It's a little scary. Bigs, bigs are getting to the point where they're extinct and, and they're tough. He has transformed himself into, you know, a, he can step out, he can shoot, he can knock down threes. Um, yeah, he's just, he's got to come out there and he's got to play a lot more aggressive, a lot harder. He's got to play with that dog in him. And you can tell that he's just, I don't know if it's the conditioning or what, but am I panicking? No, not on him because I think their team is is picking it up and they have, he has great players around him and they're going to figure it out. And he still has crazy numbers. Um, I just think sometimes it frustrates us because we can see what the potential can be, but no, I'm not panicking on him. Yeah, that's a good point. I think it's frustrating, I think, to fans. Uh, these last couple, I feel like we haven't mentioned at all on this show yet, but Eddie, how about Kyle Lowry? Yeah, I got to just say I'm biased here in that fight. Like, there's probably no player in the NBA I do not like watching more than Kyle Lowry. <laughs> <laughs> this is a guy who was flopping in the All-Star game uh, at crunch time. Like, I... I say all that to say, yeah, you, you panic a little bit. You paid him a lot of money to come and be the point guard there and handle your ball handling duties. And you pretty much benched him in the playoffs last year to play Gabe Vincent. Uh, and Gabe looked much better on both ends of the court. Uh, Kyle's getting long in the tooth. You, you do got to worry a little bit. They probably have missed their opportunity to trade him as well with that contract and the money he makes. So, yeah, a lot going on out there in Miami. Uh, Chandler, look, the team's doing fine around this next guy, but what about Chris Paul? Yeah, I'm panicking a little bit just because he's he's getting up there in age and he and he doesn't look the same. When I when I watch him play, he doesn't have that first step. He's not playing as aggressive. And it, listen, he's still playing a lot of minutes and he's just not producing as, as much as we're accustomed to. The guy's still averaging nine points, 11 assists and five rebounds. So any other guy, I would think that's a very, very solid stat line. But yeah, I think that I think this team is playing well. I, 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 I don't think they are what they were last year. I think they kind of missed their window, but they, but yeah, he's, he's 37 years old. He's making a lot of money. He's it's safe to say he's on the decline. I'm not panicking because of the team or because they're still winning and they still have a very good team, but yeah, I think it's, it's, he's closer to the end than, than the start here. Uh, aren't we all, aren't we all uh, taking a quick break? That's depressing, by the way. We got we got some surprising names that are off the hot starts. We have to figure out, is it for real? And Miles Turner, can you tamper for yourself? Uh, run it back. Coming up next. Run it up, run it back, 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 run it up. Gotta say, didn't have Miles Turner makes the case to the Lakers as to why they should trade for him. On my bingo card, I'm washed. Uh, yeah, no, this is, he basically said, if I'm the Lakers, um, they're taking a, they should take a very good look at this. Do we like the strategy of selling oneself to the team that you want to go to, Chandler? How do we feel about this? I mean, I feel him. Listen, he, he's he's been on the trading block for basically four years. He probably feels a little disrespected, detached from the team. They're tanking anyways. Um, should you do that? No. I mean, I don't think it sends a great message. He's going to the locker room today and he's literally, you know, out there selling himself. But yeah, I think he sees an opportunity where he could go to, you know, Los Angeles and play with LeBron James and, and help them win. He sees holes and that we all see with shooting and that him and Buddy can definitely provide. And um I think it's more entertaining and funny that the guy has an agent and a whole team around him and he's over there doing <laughs> the Woj posh Woj the Woj cast selling himself. I don't know that I've ever seen that. Um but the guy wants out and 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 that's the that's the trade we've all been talking about for the last couple of months for Russ. So I feel him. I wouldn't do it. But I mean, I, I wouldn't say that if I was him. But yeah, I, I, I get it. He wants <laughs> out and, and they have no future plans for him in Indiana. So why not? Yeah, I, mean, I, I don't think I'd ever seen a player do this before. I had to listen to it like twice, make sure I was hearing it right. Yo, I, I get it. You 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 want to market yourself. If you're not breaking the CBA, you're not you're technically not asking for a trade request. Yeah, whatever. Handle your business, I guess. But I I was shocked to hear him do it. Um it, it was it was funny. It was amusing. it was amusing in a lot of ways. 
He's just you know decided he went to take on there it. To, you know he went on there too, like with that plan. Like, I'll, I'll, oh, I'm going to pitch myself for yeah, sure. Oh, for I mean, sure. Look, maybe he thinks yeah. by saying it out loud and putting it into the universe, it's his own vision board. Like he's just going to get it done because no one else seems to be doing it. I, I, I kind of respect it, and I think it's funny at the same time. Uh, how about a little you buying that? We've got a few players here, and off to some amazing starts. Luka Doncic. I don't think there's a surprise. Obviously, everyone thinks he's going to be the MVP, but. Good Lord, he's had at least 30 in the first six games, and no one's done that since Michael Jordan in 1986. Mm. Okay, so are we buying Luka Doncic as uh, leading the league in scoring? Chandler, yeah, you absolutely. First. Yeah, oh. yeah, I'm, I'm buying it. The guy can do everything. He's a mismatch nightmare. He, when you see him in person, the guy is huge, and he's got an unreal ability holding people off. He's got a crazy touch. He can ISO. He's not fast, but he somehow can get by you, even if you're smaller and faster, or bigger and stronger. The, the guy's a mismatch all across the board. Um, he's knocking down shots and, and honestly with their team the way they're playing it, it's it's going to be the ball in his hand his usage rate is you know through the roof uh yeah i can definitely see him i don't see him slowing down anytime soon yeah he's got to be the odds on favorite to lead the league in scoring and you see why chandler just mentioned it the ball is always in his hand and he plays at his pace at all times nobody speeds him up nobody slows him down he does it all. He's got the greenest green light in the league. And I expect him to keep this up. He's in much better shape this year than he was last year. Uh, playing playing for the home country helped that. I think he, he, he made sure he was ready for that. And it's rolled into the season. I, I expect him to keep it up there, you know, around 35, actually, all season long, hmm. which is insane when you think about it. Okay, so yes on that one. How about Lori Markinen? Do we buy him as an all-star and Eddie before you answer remember that Malik Beasley has said he should be an all-star I don't know if that sways you one way or the other Eddie but what do you think yes or no yo shout out Malik Beasley <laughs> dope uh father son superman uh, yes. Halloween costume yesterday but my friend you are out your mind in that conference <laughs> there is no way he makes it I mean you the two Lakers will make it pretty much no matter what uh, the two Clippers will if they show up to games at some point. Obviously, the Warriors have their guys. Uh, you have the Timberwolves. The Suns guys will make. It's really hard to make the All-Star out there in that conference. Now, if we get some injuries, you get some guys who can't make it out, don't want to play in Salt Lake City. Uh, mm. If you want to take a vacation rather than spending your February in, in Utah, yeah, well, he might make it. But shout out to Laurie. He's, he's playing great, but I, I, I'm i not buying that one. Sorry, Malik. You, you know, you, the I'm buying it, Eddie. You know why? Whoa. Because because All Star All Star voting starts like next week. It's not. It's All Star changed. It's not the best players in the NBA anymore. It's who's had like the best first two or three months, which is kind of a joke. Like it's it's the, Andrew Wiggins was a starter in the All Star game last year. Is he a top ten basketball player in the world? Like no. So it's if if this Jazz somehow continue this streak and, and and they are a top six top five team which i don't see it but if they do someone's got to be an officer on their team right and if this guy's averaging 22 23 9 3 assists like it's gonna be him so like i think i think it's possible i think this this, this team is shocking everybody especially me and and, and uh and all, again like i said all stars kind of watered down now it's it's not even who had the best season you could play really really good for three months to be an all-star and not play the rest of the season but you're still an all-star that's like you know what i mean so it's 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 honestly not that big of a deal anymore to me so i think there's a Aww. chance it's not very sad but that seems like the contest. formula Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Be in, we'll be in three summer. point contest. Let him, yeah, yeah, let him do that. <laughs> I don't know. I, I I might be with Chandler on this one. I, you know what? The scoring so far this season has been pretty off the charts. 114 average a game. So Chandler, can can this be sustained? I, I think so. The talent in the NBA is unbelievable. You, you look at even the bad teams have so much good young talent, and everybody can score the ball now. Every position can shoot the three now. And defense is, is not a hot commodity these days. So I, I think it is. I think it's great for, for ratings and viewings, and it's more fun to watch, uh, you know, 
you know, points than the defensive stops for most people, unfortunately. <laughs> so I, I think it's, I think it's possible. And, and, and like I said, the, the talent is, is I watched Detroit the other night who look granted They're not a good team, but they have like Ivy and Cunningham. It's the first time I really watched Cade Cunningham play. He's so good. He's tall. He gets in the paint. He drops dimes. Like even the bad teams have so much talent now where they're going to score the ball and they're going to score it at a record breaking clip. Uh, I, you know, as a fan, yes, I much prefer to watch points than defensive stances. You are right, Chandler. All right, time for a little convince me. I'm going to give you guys a couple premises here. you got to convince me that it's possible. And, Eddie, I'm going to start with you. Ben Simmons is actually right-handed. Convince me. <laughs> oh, that's that's easy. You gave me the layup <laughs> after giving me candy corn yesterday. So yes, I, I got that. you. Um, <laughs> Ben, Ben, uh, whatever the number amount of shots he's taken this year, he's taken one that's been left-handed, and it was a three-pointer at the end of a quarter. So every other shot he's taken has either been two-handed or right-handed. He said himself that he's right-handed. I went and Googled it. He threw out the first pitch at a, at a Phillies game, right-handed. Mm -hmm. uh, that guy's right-handed. Let's let's shoot with the right hand, Ben. Let's see what happens if you do that. Right? What's the deal, Chandler? Do it. I mean, why, at this point, try. Like, yeah, when you get fouled, shoot the free throws right away. You can't get much worse, so I, why not? I, I'm I'm with Eddie. I think he should shoot free throws right-handed, get in the gym, and, and change something up because the, the, the what you're currently doing is not working. It seems like a no-brainer. If I knew I was dominant on my right this I don't understand the hang-up. I think it was his dad that told him to do things left-handed, but you can't fight your body on this one. It's anatomy. Uh, Chandler? convinced me that the Clippers, despite Kawhi's knee issues lingering, can still make the playoffs. Yeah, I think they'll still make the playoffs, but just, again, there's 10 spots and, and, and anything can happen. They still have Paul George, they still have Norman Powell, Reggie Jackson, John Wall looks to be, uh, you know, a contributing player now. Um, I don't like what I'm seeing, and it's a little concerning. He's not playing a lot. He's not playing a lot of minutes, um, and they definitely need him to be a contender. And I loved the Clippers before the season. I loved how deep they were. I loved their talent. Mm -hmm. I love all the wings they had. They're interchangeable. They can switch defensively. And they have those two guys that are, you know, two of the best two-way players in the game. Contender, no. Playoffs, yeah, I think they still have a chance with or without Kawhi. Obviously, Kawhi is going to help them, you know, advance. And yeah, I mean, they made they made the playoffs last year without them. I think they made the play in, right? But um, I think last last night is a good example of what we'll see in a lot of these games. It, you're, they eked out a win against a team they absolutely should be better than because it's a roster full of veterans. So they they have a ton of versatility to the to the lineups they have as well. Um, yeah, I think they're a playoff team, but they're going to need Kawhi to be more than just get there, you know. I know, and he's my MVP pick, so selfishly, I really need him out there, Eddie. Uh, someone convince me, someone other than Jordan Poole will win sixth man of the year. I got Christian Wood. He's in the perfect role for that award, and he's, he's right there next to him. And so it's not it's not like it's a long shot here. But playing with Luka, he's going to get all the shots he could ever want. He's going to get wide open shots. I've seen him play in person the other day, and it's actually one of his lighter games. And you could still see the difference he makes for that team. I think it's Christian Wood. Uh, if he embraces that role off the bench, which it seems like he has after complaining initially, I think that's his award to lose. All right, coming up, guys, we're taking a quick break here. All of the very best NBA Halloween costumes from the evening, plus our on the fly parlay that I promise you, I promise you it's going to hit. Run it back next. Run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back, run it up. Everyday wins make your day so much better. That's why FanDuel Casino has a daily free-to-play game, Reward Machine. It's a free game that gives players the chance to win up to $2,000 in casino bonus every day. FanDuel's Reward Machine has already given away over $5 million in prizes to over 250,000 winners. To get in on the action, all you have to do is log in daily, spin for a free chance at rewards. FanDuel wants you to win. Play Reward Machine for a free chance at Everyday Wins only on Fan Duel Casino. It's fitter brick time. I, I wish Halloween was every day because I really want to see more and more costumes as we go. Guys, let's start things off with, I think, the king of Halloween, Jordan Clarkson. Clearly his favorite holiday. Like, he is not <laughs> messing around. Like, he he is taking this serious. Had a great game last night as well. I just imagine, like, after the game, you have to put this back on to get on the, to get in the car and go home. And that's just hilarious to me. 
<laughs> yeah, this is this is this is fire. J JC goes all out. Clearly, I feel like he <sighs> sets aside his outfits for regular games. Then he has his whole other just bag for Halloween, and and yes, and, and he brings the heat. I want him to have an entire room in his house that's just a big Halloween costume closet, and that's in my mind what it is. So Jordan Clarkson for me is just a Halloween winner all around, but he's not the only one. A lot of people in the spirit last night, Colin Sexton also giving it his best shot at a little Halloween fun. <laughs> what? Well, I'm trying what to have, is, oh, I see. He? Like uh, a yeah. demented what clown is? murderer? Uh, this is like, he got this off the rack. This is not his, <laughs> he can't, he can't follow up Jordan special. Clarkson with this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He, he went to the party store for this and just copped the scariest looking mask he could find. I mean, it is a little, yeah, it, it's hard. If it's not going to be movie quality, like we can't, we wow. can't, we can't disrespect Jordan Clarkson like this. So yeah. <laughs> shout out to Colin though. Shout out to Colin, now he tried. <laughs> I love that now the bar is Jordan Clarkson or it sucks. Yeah, <laughs> There's going to be no in between. <laughs> he set the well standard. Done. Yeah. Okay. No pressure then. We have another one. John Wall, I, come on up, because now I feel, um, oh, I okay, love this okay. <laughs> this, this is amazing. This, this is, is incredible. Amazing. This I saw actually on my timeline and I died. I love this movie. I love, I, I, I love this costume. This is so funny. The, the, the caption even, it's this, this is all in. <laughs> I, I like this book more than the JC, probably just because I have a soft spot for Blue Streak and I love that movie, but this one is incredible. Okay. Like, a no, lot of people I'm, probably I'm don't with, know who this is. No, tell no, them. I'm with Chandler. This is amazing. Like, I didn't even realize it was John Wall. That's how great this costume was. I just right? thought it was Martin. I was like, what is going on here? And it's John Wall. This is great. This this it's... is the new standard. You, you've done it. We've done it. <laughs> yeah. hey, John Wall has now jumped to the top of our chart. Jordan Clarkson was... just like that. Replaced. Well, he's got one more <laughs> shot. Uh, Malik Beasley. What did you bring for us on this beautiful Halloween? Okay. You already said you like this, right, Eddie? Uh, yeah, I can't hate. This is this is amazing. Look at this little guy in his Spider-Man <laughs> costume. He's probably been wearing that for months. You know how kids are. And he's just like, it's a regular day. But I love this. This is great. This is, we might have yeah, a new he, standard. This is not fair. He cheated. Well, wait. <laughs> is Superman allowed to be with Spider-Man? I feel like it's confusing. When you bring a baby, you can do whatever you want. Is what I'm Maybe I'm a nerd. Yeah. <laughs> fine, fine. I'm the nerd. That's on me. My bad. Before, yes, you I was a, before I was a dad, I was the guy that would get annoyed like on the airplane when the baby's crying. Now I don't. So now this baby makes the costume a lot better than it really is. Uh, guys, you this cannot is, cross DC and Marvel. Uh, this is a clear <laughs> law break. But, uh, that's fine. This okay. is, uh, the little guy smiling so hard. So too. good. Like, you just, yeah, you this, love is, this. Uh, this is good. This is adorable. Hey, fine. I'm, I'm the hater. That's fine. Okay, fine. We'll move on. Okay. Uh, we've got a part. Look, I don't know. Have we hit one of these yet? But that doesn't mean we're going to stop trying. Guys, the four leg parlay's up. Eddie, I'm nervous. Give us your two legs. Uh, I'm nervous too. I have the uh, <laughs> Orlando Magic in Thunder going over. Uh, okay. we, we joke about the Jazz who have not embraced the tank. These two teams embodied the tank. I don't expect no defense out there. This is actually kind of low. I must be surprised this is low. Like, they're for sure scoring 113 each. So. I'm okay. going to go over with these guys. All right. We got an over. What else? Stephen Curry over 27.5 points. He just did this to the heat uh, like four days ago. He's torching them again. There's no way around it. Uh, unless he had a crazy night in Miami and we don't know. He's a family guy. I'm imagining he went to sleep pretty early last night. That's the thing. The Miami thing always seems to get people. Chandler, no pressure. But your two have to yeah, take Yeah, uh, I went with a crazy one. Clay Thompson just kind of getting lucky here. Hopefully, getting a quick action for him, knocking down a three to get the first bucket. And I got oh. Philly minus four against Washington. Okay, guys, if you do this and you bet twenty dollars, you will win one thousand one hundred and thirty-seven bucks. And I by the swear. way, when I meant Philly over Washington, I meant Phoenix over. I know Minnesota. you did. <laughs> I know you did. It was on, it was on the board, and I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna let Chandler like have his moment. Do you guys think we should have our own personal side prop bet about when one of these is going to actually hit? Like what week in the season? <laughs> we can this one's not the party. one. This isn't the one. This isn't the one. Yo, I, but do no. it anyways. Yeah, I got people right. hitting me up on social, upset. Like, yo, I'm sorry. I'm like, I'm trying. Like, what do you? Hey, not our fault. But we will be back tomorrow, and we'll give it one more shot. Then, guys, have a good night. <laughs>